Dare I say that Destiny 2's new free to play activity Onslaught is actually pretty fun. If this game mode is the reason that Gambit was left in the corner to starve, I say so be it. I've been playing a lot to try and get shiny weapon drops and because you get a lot of loot playing on Legend difficulty, I've been doing that. Legend difficulty is actually fairly challenging though, so today I'm postponing Xur, don't worry I'll do that video tomorrow, to bring you a beefy guide to beating Legend Onslaught. Even if you feel like you can't clear all 50 waves, I still think you should give it a try. There's a lot of good loot on the table, and hey, I think you can do it. Have faith, young grasshopper. If you're here for build recommendations, skip ahead to the following timestamp. And if you're here because you only want to farm shiny weapons and want a really fast farm for that, skip ahead to that timestamp. Otherwise, let's take it from the top. Very quickly, the basics. Onslaught is horde mode where you have to defend a structure called the ADU from a lot of enemies. If the ADU takes too much damage, it will get destroyed and you'll fail. You can also fail from the extinguish modifier on legend mode, aka everybody in the fire team dies at the same time. Dead enemies can potentially drop batteries, which you can pick up and throw directly at the ADU to both heal it and earn additional scrap. The first thing that we're going to talk about. Scrap is a currency, and you can use it in Onslaught to both buy and upgrade different defensive technology to help protect the ADU. There are three options, tripwires, turrets, and decoys. And believe it or not, after thinking it would be just a dumb meme, I am firmly on team decoy all the way. Enemies fall for them all the time. You'll very often turn around in combat to see a bunch of dumb hive or fallen whacking away at some hologram. I know it seems dumb, but every second they're attacking that hologram is time they're not damaging you or the ADU. Even the single biggest obstacle you'll fight in Legend difficulty can get baited by a decoy. More on him later. Decoys do have a hidden health bar though, so even though they're great, if you let them take too much damage, they will eventually get broken and disappear. With that in mind, even though they are just a decoy, you would do well to protect them when you can. On the subject of scrap, a question I hear a lot is when do I buy? Hard to answer, but I do have a few rules of thumb. First of all, I've stopped buying in the first 10 waves. Things usually get wilder and crazier at the tail end of Onslaught, so buying up front is often a waste. You want to play the long game here, so I don't really start buying until around wave 11, and even then I maybe just get one decoy. However, nothing is carved in stone. If things are going poorly and the ADU is really hurt before the halfway point, sure, I'll drop a little extra scrap if I feel that I need to. If you can get to wave 30 before really buying, you'll be in a good spot. Then obviously dump everything you can at wave 41 and really go wild. TLDR, waves 1 to 20, try to let your build do the talking, waves 21 to 30, a thing or two from each teammate, 31 to 40, spend a little bit more, then from wave 41 on, just go hog wild. Believe me, if you've never finished 50 waves before, it'll make finishing easier and you'll appreciate the fact that you saved early on. If only one decoy is available at your current ADU location and you want to buy something else, I would next recommend turrets, which are fine, and then finally tripwires. All right, moving right along, we got a few random but important tips to take note of. One that may give you a lot of mileage over time is that you can dupe ADU batteries, but it'll cost your class ability to do so. Yeah, this one is technically a little cheesy, so don't do it if you don't want to. Throw the ADU battery, then immediately after, hit the button to activate your class ability. That little maneuver can be done on any class, but it's easiest by far to do on the Hunter. Their timing with the dodge is pretty loose, and for Warlock and Titan, it's a little bit more strict. Doing that can give you extra scrap and extra ADU health. Just keep in mind, it does come at the cost of your class ability, so it's not completely free. Next tip, always call out when you're grabbing the heavy ammo. On Legend difficulty, you'll occasionally Occasionally get heavy ammo crates by the ADU, and they will remain there until somebody grabs them. Then there's going to be a timer until the ammo goes bye-bye, so if you grab them, go ahead and let your teammates know so they don't go to waste. On that note, remember that you're going to go into a portal at the end of waves 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, and when you do, there will be a rally flag before the boss fight. With that in mind, if you're on wave 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50, and you haven't yet picked up the heavy ammo box by the ADU, just do it. Even if you're 90% full on heavy ammo, you're going to go through the portal shortly anyway. Might as well just burn all the heavy ammo that you can. You'll be full up before the boss fight anyway. Another random big tip, unless it's a core part of your build, supers should be saved for emergency use only. An example of a super that you can use more recklessly is a hunter tether if you're wearing the Orpheus rig exotic. Onslaught is such an ad dense activity that when you drop a tether with Orpheus rig, you'll probably have your tether back in like 30 seconds anyway. For other builds, 
results though, and especially if you've never cleared 50 waves before and want to get it done for the first time, supers are your lifeline and should only be used in one of three scenarios. One, you're about to die and one or more teammates are already dead. Two, the ADU is getting overwhelmed and you're about to fail. Or three, Tom appears. And on that note, we come to what will undoubtedly be the undoing of many teams on Legend Mode, Tom. The nickname my buddy and I gave the uber thick tormentor who will randomly show up at some point during your run on Legend. Tom has a lot of health, is annoyingly mobile, does a lot of damage, and can suppress you. Your team should always be prepared for Tom to show up. How you handle him is up to you, but just be prepared in some way. It could be saving some extra heavy ammo, holding onto your super, your call. If you laughed earlier about me being on Team Decoy, by the way, a fun little PSA, Tom can and will fall for the decoy, and even though he'll tear through it relatively quickly, the extra time you'll get from the decoy is very much appreciated in that fight. Also, a reminder, in Onslaught, your loadouts aren't locked. So if you're playing, say, a Hammer Titan and Tom shows up, you can very quickly open your loadout, swap to something like the Pyro Gale exotic, hit him with an ultra strong super, then change back to your regular exotic. And it doesn't have to be the Pyro Gale, the Falling Star exotic, the Celestial Nighthawk golden gun, you get the idea. Also, remember that Tom will chase players, and if things are getting too bad, you can try to lead him away from the ADU while damaging him. Whatever you do, always be ready for Tom. He will show up at some point, and when he does is random. The next tip is more of a personal preference kind of thing, but because you can pick the map on Legend, I recommend going for Midtown. The other two maps aren't bad, they're just relatively out in the open. I like Midtown because there are really narrow hallways where the enemy can get bottlenecked up. It makes crowd control builds more fun and lethal IMO. Another tip, Onslaught has no in-game timer. If you're inside the pyramid in a boss fight, there is no need to rush. If a teammate dies in an unsafe location in the pyramid during the boss fight, leave them where they are. They'll eventually revive on their own. You don't need to risk a team wipe and a fail by running out into the open and getting murdered trying to save them. Play defensively and take your time. Final random tip before we talk about shiny weapon farming and then loadouts. Disorienting grenade launchers are godly. You don't necessarily need one to succeed, but they're so unbelievably good in Onslaught, I highly recommend that one person on your team brings one, ideally with auto-loading holster. Remember, Pardon Our Dust is craftable and can be made with that roll. Fire a nade, blind everybody, then gun them down with your primary while the launcher reloads itself in your back pocket, god tier, and has gotten my team out of many, many a jam. All right, let's say you've already beaten the 50 wave legend challenge and now you only care about farming god roll weapons and shiny weapon drops. Your game plan is to launch legend mode with a fire team of two other friends, complete 10 waves, get your loot, quit the activity and relaunch. Reason being, legend onslaught gets harder and harder as you go and you can burn through the first 10 waves no problem. You'll get two loot chests after the pyramid fight on wave 10, but you won't get that coveted third chest until the end of wave 50. But again, if you've already done 50 waves and you just want loot, doing the first 10 waves on repeat over and over is way faster and easier. I have to give a reminder here, this is okay to do on legend mode because there is no matchmaking, meaning you can only do this strategy with friends. Do not, I repeat, do not use this on normal onslaught mode. You'll be dicking over random players by leaving them high and dry and you only get one chest anyway, so it wouldn't be worth it. Only do the 10 wave repeat strategy on legend difficulty with a fire team of friends don't dick over random people and ruin this game mode otherwise i'll be under your bed tonight on god all right loadouts as per usual i will give a psa there are many loadouts that will work but these are just my current favorites one for each class also i'm sure there will be a handful of people ready with replies like lamau imagine using insert fragment here instead of blah, 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 blah. go ahead and change whatever you like about these loadouts or don't use them at all you do you oh yeah and i'm gonna hard recommend that you get your resil up to 10 on every build and fill your chest armor with all defense 
defensive mods like Concussive Dampener and whatever resist element you want. Reason being, not dying is hugely important. Build number one, Warlock. The dim link for this build will be down in the pinned comment, but the TLDR is Strand Warlock with Necrotic Grip, Osteostriga, and a Blinding Grenade Launcher, combined with eating your grenade to activate Weaver's Trance. Step one, eat your grenade. Step two, spam Osteostriga and watch as multiple things happen. Poison damage will spread everywhere, and when you get kills, Weaver's Trance will kick in and enemies will become suspended. You're also going to be generating a bunch of orbs of power thanks to the Kinetic Siphon Armor mod, which will give you both woven male armor and further decreases the cooldown of your grenade, meaning you can eat your nade again and keep abusing Weaver's Trance. This build is a perfect pairing with an auto-loading blinding grenade launcher. I use my handy Truth Teller that I've had forever, but whatever other special you want would be fine. Finally, I have a machine gun, mainly because at the time of me recording this, Legend has a machine gun overcharge so I can reap a free extra 25% outgoing damage. That modifier will likely rotate by the way, so keep an eye out for that. Again, full dim link for this build will be down in the pinned comment. The next build is for Titan and may actually be my favorite out of the three. Your plan is to make everything and everyone burn and explode while also healing nonstop with precious scars. Final blows from your weapons with a damage type matching your subclass energy create a burst of healing around you that gives your allies restoration. Your weapon of choice is anything that can cause scorch, and I will hard recommend either the Sunshot or my favorite, Zauli's Bane with Incandescent. You can heal nonstop, cause explosions, and chain kill entire waves by yourself with this build, and I honestly really love it. Don't forget that the artifact this season has a ton of neat toys for solar players to completely abuse, including Kindling Trigger, Heart of the Flame, Flint Striker, Revitalizing Blast, and Rays of Precision. Note, my Titan has fragments that focus on group healing. If you would rather focus on offensive fragments, by all means, do that. Also, keep an eye out for a video from my buddy Cool Guy, who turned me on to the Precious Scars to begin with. His build video is no doubt going to be heavily detailed and absolutely worth your time to watch. Full dim link to my very beautiful Titans build in the pinned comment. My final build is for Void Hunter. It's especially good right now because Trace Rifle Overcharge is turned on, meaning you'll do even more damage with this build, but even if that modifier goes away, it's still great overall. The game plan is to use the Wave Splitter in combination with Jer Falcons. Your Falcon gives your Void weapons volatile and potentially bonus damage after using a finisher, and Wave Splitter can suppress targets and ramp up damage after picking up an Orb of Power. That part will be easy AF to do with Harmonic Siphon on your helmet. The rest of the Hunter kit is all handpicked to go really well with these two exotics. You'll be proccing Devour, creating Void Breaches, and going invisible in a loop non-stop. Basically, if you play your cards right, you'll be using Wave Splitter as a primary weapon, even though it runs on special ammo. Just make sure you're special finisher now and then and you'll be made in the shade. General order of operations for this one, go invisible, beam people with wave splitter, pick up orbs and void breaches, rinse and repeat. Again, dim link to that build down in the comment section. If you have a build you love using, share it down in the comment section as well as any tips if you have any. Thank you very much for watching. Peace!